Hey there once again YouTube. My name is Ben Ferriolo and I'm back once again. I got some interesting stuff to share with you guys today. First off, do you remember those loud trumpet or grinding metal sounds in the sky that started around 2010-2011? Well, it was a global phenomena and still actually is. Now the events have not disappeared, people are just getting used to them. Of course there are some fakes on the internet and they get kind of annoying having to go through the fakes. But they usually are pretty easy to tell apart from the real ones if you have a good ear. Well, last night, I'm going to say maybe around 11.30 p.m. So I'm going to say 11.30 p.m. Pacific Time, June 10th, 2019, almost midnight. I went outside for a smoke on my balcony. Yes, guys, I am a smoker, but don't worry, I'm trying to quit. But while I was outside, I heard this low rumble, which can only be described as a deep-pitched trumpet. So... A good example, actually, of what this sounded like is a fleet of World War II bombers going over your house, but maybe at like 30,000 feet, you know, because it wasn't too, too loud. Or maybe even multiple dirigibles? I don't know. Now, the sound, again, was not too loud, sometimes being drowned out by passing traffic. I actually thought it was a plane or approaching semi causing the sound. However, I was outside for 20 whole minutes listening to the sound the entire time, I could not pinpoint which direction it was coming from. It seemed to come from every direction. Although it would sometimes increase and decrease in volume, but pretty much remain constant the whole time. I know others have heard things like this as well, so if you have heard anything strange in the sky lately, please let me know. I was kind of creeped out by, uh, by this. I live 20 miles northeast of Seattle, Washington, and the sounds, again, were not loud, but they definitely were noticeable. I have an amazing ear for tones, and the tone of it caught me off guard somewhat. I don't know. It kind of almost made me feel unsettled. Now, that would have been the end of it. But about 30 to 60 minutes later, boom! Earthquakes start lighting up California and Nevada with two magnitude 4.1 earthquakes at 3.5, many smaller ones as well, and only within 30, 45 minutes of each other, even though the epicenters were hundreds of miles apart. Now, I'm not some crazy conspiracy person. Although, you know, conspiracy people, they sometimes do turn out to be correct. And I'm not saying that the seismic activity is connected to the sound I heard, seeing that I live very far from California and Nevada. However, the timing is just odd, to say the least. I sadly did not get the video of the sound, but even if I did get a video, I doubt it would have been audible on the video, seeing that my camera and smartphone don't have that good of an audio recording. Now, the sound lasted the whole time I was outside, 20 minutes or so, and it could have been occurring for longer than that. However, I went back outside about two and a half hours later or so, around 2 a.m., since I've been having trouble sleeping lately, and the sound was no longer occurring. So I know that I really heard what I heard. So again, if you guys have heard anything odd lately outside, please let me know. I understand this phenomenon has been occurring for almost a decade now, at times garnering attention from local and regional authorities and news stations worldwide. I have never heard it as severe as some places have, but last night's sounds were quite intriguing to say the least. So let's talk about last night's crazy burst in seismicity. So last night around 724 UTC, an interesting burst in seismicity occurred in both California and Nevada in this location here, and here, and here as well. And as, as of the past hour, as of 12 p.m. Pacific Time, June 11, 2019, we see a 3.0 is being reported. We'll look at that in just a bit. But again, about 724 UTC is about 30 minutes to an hour after I heard the strange sound coming from the sky last night. Within only 22 minutes, a magnitude 4.1 struck Goldfield, Nevada at 15.9 kilometers in depth with a magnitude 2.8 uh, aftershock and many smaller ones. Uh, then a magnitude 3.5 struck the San Andreas Fault near Trey Pinos. Please tell me if I'm saying that right. Then a magnitude 4.1 struck the Geysers, California, a location notorious for human-caused earthquakes due to geothermal pumping operations. The largest geothermal pumping operation in the world, I believe, is in that location, pumping energy from a large magma reservoir just underneath the surface. That magma chamber, I believe, is the same one that fuels periodic eruptions at the Clear Lake Volcanic Center. So what the heck was going on at this time to cause all of these earthquakes within such a short period of time? Also, notice the epicenters. Notice 4.1 was right here, 3.5 was right here, and the 4.1 was right here all within about 20 minutes of each other, 20 to 30 minutes. But look at how far away, guys. That's hundreds and hundreds of miles. So let's take a look at some of the seismic data for three these three earthquakes and subsequent aftershocks. But first, 
Let's take a look at sulfur dioxide emissions at ground level during the time frame of this increase in seismicity, just in case, using the tool provided by earth.noschool.net. So please keep in mind the increase in seismicity started at about 724 UTC on June 11th. Remember, 724 UTC, June 11th, keep that in mind. So here we are at earth.noschool.net looking at sulfur dioxide mass at the surface, showing sulfur dioxide emissions coming from the ground as detected by GOES-5, GMAO, and NASA satellites. Now, check this out. Here we are June 11th, 2019 at 3 UTC. At about 724 UTC is when the increase in seismicity was spotted. Each increment is three hours. But check this out. I'm going to go backwards just once. Okay, here we have California, right? Here's California. Here's kind of the border right down here. Nevada is right in this location right here. I'm not looking at any specific sulfur dioxide emissions, which we do see a couple right down here and here as well. This is, I believe this is Lassen Peak Volcanic Center, which does see some slight sulfur dioxide emissions from time to time. But as I go through the time, as I get closer to 7 UTC, 7 to 8 UTC, you'll notice that this starts to become more purple in this area. Especially Clear Lake Volcanic Field is right here where the geothermal pumping operation is. Just tell me if you see an increase in sulfur dioxide emissions. Let's go. Remember, purple is stronger. White is like nothing. Okay, here we go. 3 UTC. This is 4 hours beforehand. 6 UTC, 1 hour beforehand. 9 UTC, 2 hours after. And notice I go forward and it slowly dissipates. Did you notice that? Let me do it again. Keep your eye on California and Nevada, which is in this location right here. Let me go all the way back, all the way back to zero UTC. Now we're going to go forward, all right? Tell me if you see an increase that kind of correlates with the increase in seismicity. Just check this out. And then it dissipates. Isn't that weird? Now let me go all the way back one more time. Let's do one more time. One more time. Okay, ready? Here we go. And then it dissipates. Isn't that weird? I don't know if that there's a connection, but I thought that was very, very odd. I don't know, guys. Let me know what you think about that. So here we are in Goldfield, Nevada. Well, 52 kilometers east-southeast of Goldfield, Nevada, right near Mount Helen. No, not Mount St. Helens, Mount Helen. I think this is, uh, Nevada is pretty volcanic anyways, but um, I'm not saying these are volcanic. In my opinion, they're a little too deep. Um, I don't know, though. We'll take a look at the seismic data in just a second. This is the first magnitude 4.1 that struck last night during the 20 minutes of increased seismicity for California and Nevada. The 4.1 was supposedly felt by, drumroll please, probably not that many people because this is a very sparsely populated area. Yeah, six people. There's the moment tensor right there. Very, very interesting. And then they reported a magnitude 2.8 aftershock, just occurring a little bit more shallow at 15.2 kilometers in depth and a 0 0.3, 0 0.9. And then just as of the past hour, we see a 3.0 at 14.4 kilometers in depth. So why don't we take a look at the closest seismic station to this earthquake event and see what the heck is going on. So here we are in the seismic program swarm from station uh, with data taken from station STC in the SN network. No location code given, short period vertical, so we do not need a frequency filter for this one. Scrolling down, I want to start with the spectrogram just real quick because I've already reviewed some of this previous data. There are some very interesting events that have been occurring. Let's see, that's surface noise, that's surface noise likely. This is likely a strange looking earthquake, kind of emergent, but to me that does look like a real seismic event. And let's see, this looks like a real seismic event as well. Could be a small regional event. And then we have some type of low frequency activity occurring right here. Either a low frequency earthquake or a regional event. But in my opinion, this actually does look more like a low frequency earthquake. In my opinion. But then again, I'm not a professional. Going back to the spectrogram, we see some weird stuff going on near this location, guys. We do see an earthquake right here. That's definitely an earthquake, although it's emergent, which is very strange. Dominant frequencies stop at about 7.9 hertz, so it's not a low frequency event, obviously. Whoops, my bad. Going back to the spectrogram, let's go down. We see an earthquake right here, likely occurring somewhat near the location. Very strange looking earthquake. Going here, we do see another earthquake as well. That is definitely an earthquake. So there has been somewhat of an increase in seismicity. This is not an earthquake. To me, that definitely looks like some type of surface event. Except for that, I'm not too sure. Here we do see a blatant earthquake, very obviously an earthquake right there. 
And going forward, don't know what the heck that is. I can't say if that's an earthquake or not. When I say something's an earthquake, I always look out for P and S wave arrivals or, or arrivals that are similar, or that look similar to P and S wave arrivals, right? Because that's pretty much how you tell if an earthquake's an earthquake, because usually surface noise does not have P and S wave arrivals. Going forward, we're getting closer to the time the earthquake started, not really seeing much. Frequencies are too high right there. I'm thinking that's just surface noise or something weird going on. That looks like a teleseism right there. Going forward, here we see a small earthquake right here with mid-range frequencies. In my opinion, this is not a regional event. If it was a regional event, which could happen hundreds of miles away from here, it would look a little different, but I don't know. You could t definitely see this was a, for sure a very strange earthquake. And then we see something right here, and then boom! This is the magnitude 4.1, the first to occur within the 20 to 30 minutes of pretty good size seismicity last night for California and Nevada. Here are the waveforms right here. Let's look at the P wave, upwards going P waves showing compression. Going forward, zooming in. Very interesting, guys. Apparently, they said it was at, what, 15.8 kilometers in depth. Let's check. 15.9, my bad, 15.9 kilometers in depth going forward. We see an aftershock right here, and here's the magnitude 2.8 aftershock in my opinion. This definitely looks a little bit stronger than the magnitude 2.8, and look at how long it lasts, guys. Look at that. And, and also, I cannot see any clear S waves. Do you guys see any S waves on here? The S waves could start right there. I don't know, though. I really don't know. I Usually, I can sometimes pick out the S waves. I really can't right here. I don't know. It takes a better eye than I got right now. Then we see another strange event right here. And then guess what we see? Remember the magnitude 4.1 in the geysers, California? Here's the regional signal from the magnitude 4.1 from the geysers. Let's add a frequency filter of 4.5. A high pass 4.5 hertz filter. There we go. To the eighth power. That's okay. Oh, what am I doing? My bad. My bad. I screwed that one up. 4.5 low pass filter. There we go. Okay, so we see this is the regional signature from the magnitude 4.1 in the geysers, California, which occurred hundreds and hundreds of miles away from here, but occurred as part of the burst in seismicity last night, 30 minutes to an hour after the strange sounds that I heard. Again, I, I don't know if they're connected or not because I live very, very far from California, Nevada, but still, it's just odd. I don't know. I don't believe in... Well, sometimes coincidences can happen, but I don't know. I don't believe in coincidences too much. And then uh, the past data stream, as of 12, 12 p.m. Pacific time, June 11, 2019, we do see the magnitude 3.0 that has just been reported at 14.4 kilometers in depth, just right in this area that has been seeing an increase in seismicity, turning on U.S. faults. The USGS is not saying there are any faults in this area, but I wouldn't be surprised. There's faults everywhere, pretty much, guys. So, very, very interesting. So, what do you think caused the increase in seismicity last night, guys? Right after I heard that very strange sound. Ah, uh, who knows? So, let's move on to the next earthquake. So, we just reviewed the magnitude 4.1 and the 2.8 over there in Nevada. Next one to occur, just about, I'm going to say, after the 4.1, I'm going to say, ooh, about, what, seven minutes or so? After the 4.1 at 3.5 hit the San Andreas Fault area just to the east, northeast of the San Andreas line right here. So let's check out the event page. Apparently it occurred at 7.3 kilometers in depth. Surprisingly, only 22 people reported feeling this event very close to the epicenter right here. So let's take a look at this earthquake just real fast in the seismic program swarm. Here we are in the seismic program swarm with data taken from the closest seismic station to the magnitude 3.5 along the San Andreas Fault in California during last night's interesting increase in seismicity during the 30 minute time frame from 724 UTC to 750 or whatever. Because there were also some other earthquakes occurring after that but they were much smaller. <clears throat> okay, so this is from station PACP in the BK network, 00 location code, broadband vertical. Because it's a broadband channel, I did add a 1 hertz high pass filter. Right here, we do see the magnitude 3.5 near Trepinos. Trace Pinos? Trey Pinos? Whatever. Some lower frequencies in the S wave right there. Notice you see the P wave right there and the S wave starting right about there, I believe. Let's go to the spectra plot. Dominant lower frequencies between 1 hertz and 4.4 hertz, but there are some strong frequencies going well beyond that. So this is not a low frequency earthquake, but 
it's interesting nonetheless. And as we see over here, here's the tele or excuse me, the regional seismic signature from the magnitude 4.1 in the geysers, California, which we'll look at in just a second. And here's the regional uh, signature from the magnitude 4.1 in Nevada. So did show up on here as well. And a few hours ago, there was a smaller earthquake. I'm going to say maybe a 1.5, 1.6. Very strange characteristics. Very weird, weird looking quakes lately, guys. Very strange earthquakes. I don't know what the heck is going on. So let's move on to the last earthquake I wanted to take a look at, which would be the magnitude 4.1 that occurred near the Clear Lake Volcanic Field and the geothermal pumping operations. And there have been 97 earthquakes in the past 24 hours as of 12, 18 p.m. Pacific time, June 11, 2019. Almost 100 earthquakes, guys. Almost 100 earthquakes. Most of them being part of the increase in seismicity last night. I don't know. Very strange, guys. It was a very strange night last night. I swear to God. I even had trouble sleeping. I, I don't know. You let me know what you think about that. But here we see the magnitude 4.1. Notice how before the magnitude 4.1, there were some other quakes, yes. But the majority of the earthquakes, here's the 4.1 right here. The majority of the earthquakes are all the way, whoa, whoa, whoa. So yeah, most of them did occur after the magnitude 4.1. Almost seemed like something broke through. So why don't we take a look at the event page? Why didn't I do that first, Ben? Why didn't I do that? Now there are also some mid-range magnitude 2s as well. Let's go here, go to the event page just real quick. Apparently it occurred at 2 kilometers in depth, which is very shallow. So maybe one of the geothermal wells popped. I'm not sure, though. The moment tensor sure looks very odd. Scrolling down. 67 people reported to USGS that they felt it. Someone near the epicenter, even a few people down in San Francisco Bay Area, did feel it as well. Again, this took part as uh, during the 30 minutes or so of increased seismicity last night. Crazy night last night, guys. So, let's take a look at this magnitude 4.1 from the closest available seismic station and check it out in the Seismic Program Swarm. Here we are in the seismic program swarm with a station that is very close to the earthquake swarm epicenter, um, GDXB in the NC network, zero, zero, or actually no location code, excuse me, which would be dash dash, no location code given, broadband vertical since it's a broadband channel, remember HHZ or BHE is broadband vertical. I usually like to add a, what is it, a one hertz high pass filter to the eighth power, just to get rid of those pesky background microseisms. Notice. Very few quakes earlier in the day, but magnitude 4.1, which made the station glitch out a little bit, which is right here. The magnitude 4.1 actually saw the majority of the earthquakes after the 4.1. So here it is right here. Very strange looking earthquake. Look at those waveforms. Even with the 1 hertz high pass filter here. Let me take the filter off real quick. It, look at that. Very strange. I have never seen an earthquake like that in my life. I, I, it's weird. It is very weird, and apparently it was very shallow, and here it is on the spectrogram looking very powerful. Look at the aftershocks. Look at one, two, three, maybe? Four, five, six, possibly seven, eight, nine. Look at all those aftershocks, guys. Look at how strong they are. Look at that. Now, look at the spectrogram. We are not seeing any low-frequency background activity which would be indicative of volcanic activity. I do not think that this could be a sign of volcanic activity. It could be, you never know, but this could be due to their geothermal pumping operation that they have there. And a lot of times when I see fracking earthquakes or geothermal pumping earthquakes caused by humans, usually they are void of the lower frequency band. Usually they are have much stronger higher frequencies, but sometimes they don't. It just all depends. But going forward, we see many of the earthquakes, many of the earthquakes that occurred in the past 24 hours. Again, they're saying almost 100 have occurred, probably more than 100 because they're not reporting all of these little teeny tiny microquakes. I mean, I'm going to say probably in total, this is just a rough, rough estimate, in total, including even these tiny, tiny, tiny guys, I'm going to say maybe 400 in total. But the ones they were actually able to locate, they're almost 100. So usually for large burst and seismicity that that occur like this with many teeny tiny events and many larger events as well usually they only report the ones that are locatable sometimes the smaller ones are not that great to locate i don't know but we're still seeing some earthquake activity very very interesting not seeing any low frequency background tremor which is good that's a good sign even with the high pass one hertz filter you would still be able to see harmonic volcanic tremor 
which usually goes up to five to six hertz. And this is just one hertz. It's just deleting below one hertz. So not seeing any low frequency background trimmer at all. Thank God. I was praying that we wouldn't. I haven't seen any. But still, you never know. You never know. And then we see some strange surface activity right here. Very odd. See a little bit of something right here. That's very interesting. Not seeing much else. Not seeing much else. As of the most recent data stream, the data went offline for a little bit. Came back online. And only a few more earthquakes in the past few hours. Very teeny tiny microquakes still occurring. But that was the magnitude 4.1 in the geysers, which occurred as part of the crazy seismicity last night for California and Nevada. So what do you guys think? Let me know what you think. And if you guys have heard any strange sounds in the sky recently, please let me know because it's very weird. I've never really experienced that. Very weird. And I have a good ear for tones. And I've never heard. I mean, I've heard it on other videos before about the strange sounds in the sky. But I've never heard it with my own ears. Ever. Ever. So that was pretty an interesting experience. Hope you guys have a great day. Here's the magnitude 4.1. And the guys, there's multiple, multiple aftershocks. Again, crazy seismicity last night. Let's see if there's anything else that occurred while I've been recording. Let's go to the world. Okay, let's go to Hawaii real quick. So we do have some earthquakes on the summit of Kilauea. A little bit up north near Hualalai Volcano, if I'm saying that correct. Going to California. We did see, let's see, that's still the 3.0 that we looked at. Then up near, oh, I don't know where this is. 2.8 near Gerber, California. Nothing too crazy. And then some other microquakes in this area as well. With Mount St. Helens seeing a few earthquakes as well. But that's pretty much it for right now. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. God bless. Let me know what you think. See you later.